Ooh, hello. Today is December 12th, and I'm so glad that you decided to join me for my Live at Five here on Sunday. And today we're going to be talking about habits. Um, I'm in a organizing book club. I don't know if you guys know, I'm actually in three book clubs. I'm in a local neighborhood book club. I'm in a book club with a really good friend of mine who's also a neighbor, and I, I host Organizing Book Club. And we've been reading Atomic Habits by James Clear. Yes, Atomic Habits. And I don't know if anybody here has had a chance to see this book. It's actually fantastic. I highly recommend it. The concept really being, in a very quick nutshell, that the smallest changes can have really large impacts and, and effects. Um, so it's just 1% changes over the course of a year can develop into 37% uh, of positive changes or negative changes. So speaking of habits, here we are a couple of weeks away from the first of the year, which is a classic time for everybody to make resolutions and start to change habits. So that's why I want to talk about these things now. So <clears throat> James Clear talks about his habits and habit stacking. What he's talking about is what I've talked about. I think a few months ago, I did a Tip Tuesday about routine, reward, and repeat. And that's what he's talking about. So Katie mentioned about getting her mail, sorting through it, and recycling the things she didn't need to do. And Katie, the suggestion I would make for you is you need to link that task. So have something you have to do with something that you want to do. So girl, I know you're a big fan of coffee. So perhaps when you're having that, you know, third cup of coffee, that's when you go and get the mail, sort it out, put it away and recycle what doesn't need to be done so that you're doing it on a daily basis. Gretchen Rubin talks, uh, has this phrase that she likes to use, which is, it's better to keep up than to catch up, right? So it's so much easier for us to maintain these small habits with these 1% cha positive changes than to ignore everything and try to catch up. So it's a lot easier to just open the half a dozen pieces of mail on a daily basis than it is to take a huge stack of mail at the end of a week or the end of a month because something's gonna fall through the cracks. It's a lot easier to do our laundry on a weekly basis than to leave it for a month's worth of laundry, okay? So it's a lot easier to keep up than catch up. That's what Gretchen Rubin likes to say. So when it comes to habits, I'm a big fan of habit stacking. So a couple of examples I'll use, and it's all about the reward. He talks about cue, craving, response, reward. And I'm gonna even simplify it even more. I wanna talk about choosing a, an action that you know that you're gonna do on a daily basis. So a great example is, I have so many clients who have all of the best intentions of taking supplements or vitamins, um, their morning medication, and they forget. And they've got cues on their cell phone, but of course their cell phone text will go off and they get distracted. But what's one thing that I know they're gonna do every day? They're gonna go for that, you know, that breakfast beverage, be it a cup of tea or cocoa or, tea or coffee. So I like to put their vitamins right by their mugs. In fact, sometimes I'll even put the vitamins in front of the mugs so that they have to reach over the vitamin now, it's a lot easier to just take that vitamin box down, take your vitamins, have your breakfast beverage, and then you're, you've linked those two tasks. So that's what James Clear call, calls habit stacking. And that's what I say is that your to-dos go in twos. So if you can link something that you already do all the time with something that you need to do, that's a great way to make sure that you set some, some positive habits. Um, some other great suggestions are things like, uh, sorry, um, for instance, for me, I want to be drinking more water. So, but I also like to drink wine. So I'm trying to make a deal with myself for every, um, 
you know, glass of water I have during the day, I get to drink an ounce of wine in the evening. It's not exactly, uh, you know, ounce for ounce, and it's certainly not ounce for ounce, but I try to drink maybe say 80, 80 ounces of water during the day. And that way I can be sure that I can enjoy my eight ounce glass of wine in the evening. So do you see what I mean? I'm rewarding myself later for something that I wanna do now. Uh, I, I love that you guys love the habit stacking. So if you have any other great ideas about habit stacking or linking kind of routine, reward, and then repeat, um, let me know in the chat. Uh, another great example one of my clients does is that she, especially during these types of COVID times, she's finding it's really important to do family meeting um, just to see where her family's at. So they've decided as a family to do a family meeting every Friday night. And their reward is that they get their favorite meal delivered in that evening. So that's a great way of, again, routine. They're going to do the family meeting every Friday night. Reward, they're going to have their takeout meal and repeat. They, they know that they're going to do this every week going forward. And for her, it's really helped ground her family. And they've seen a, you know, some of the issues that might have really been ugly during these COVID times with school. They've kind of nipped in the bud. So that's a great way of making sure that those things happen. What other great examples can I give you? Um, for me, every Sunday, oh gosh, I need to go switch my laundry. Every Sunday I do laundry. And it's just a couple of loads because we're just a family of two. But I love the feeling of every Sunday getting my sheets clean, remaking my bed and getting into clean sheets. For me, that's a huge reward to make sure that I get the laundry finished. It's done, it's up from the basement, it's all put away, the bed is remade, and that's my reward. So I really want you to think about what could reward you so that you can do this habit stacking, or as I call it, routine, reward, repeat. Um, oh, this is a great example. Missy's saying if she wants to work out in the morning, she lays her workout clothes out the night before. And that is such a great example. I actually had a client who slept in her workout clothes so that she would have no excuse. She couldn't say. So she literally roll out of bed, brush her teeth, put on her glasses and put on her sneakers and leave the house. So again, it's about removing those barriers, right? And we've all created barriers, but if we can take a look at those barriers that we've created and make it easy, we're human. We just want the path of least resistance. So anything we can do to make that path a little bit easier for ourselves is going to reinforce these uh, patterns, these positive patterns. Now, of course, if it's a negative pattern, we need to address that. So one of the things that um, James Clear says in his book is that you need to, you can be as motivated as you want, but you really need to identify with something to make that your belief. So I think Missy is a great example. I think Missy truly identifies as an athlete. She does CrossFit. She is really fit, right? So that's part of her identity. I, I think of her as somebody who's very healthy, very um, aware of her body and you know, able to move her body in a healthy manner. So she identifies as an athlete. So for her, a natural thing to do is to go and exercise, to work out. Um, people who identify as artists are the people that you see that create. They don't make excuses. They're in their studios, they're painting, they're drawing, they're writing. They identify as an artist, right? Somebody who identifies as a healthy person would be the person who cho chooses a healthier meal or a healthier option, whether that's not to smoke, or to take that extra steps instead of the elevator. So I think this is a really interesting idea that he put, presents is that your identity um, forms your belief system and your belief system is what really motivates you, okay? We only can have so much willpower, but if we have an identity as a healthy person, an artist, a, a writer, whatever that is, then we will take the actions to be that person. So, and you know, they say, if you can't make it, fake it. So think of yourself as the person who would, who would exercise, who would 
call their mother, right? If your identity is to be a good daughter or whatever it is. Um, what else can I tell you? I love that this idea, and I'm just reading my notes, you, that you commit to the process, but the process determines your progress, okay? So we, we can't see our progress on small incremental basis, right? If we exercise once, we're not gonna see any major changes. It's the incremental processing of exercising every day or making healthy choices, drinking water every day, or calling your mother every day, or whatever, whatever habit it is that you wanna get into. But over time, that builds. And he gives a great example in the book about the British bicycle racing team were losers. People didn't even wanna let them ride their bikes because they didn't wanna be involved. But they made really small incremental changes. They changed the fabric of the uh, uniforms that they wore that had least resistance, 1% least resistance. They changed um, just very, how they inflated their tires. These very, very small changes made them Olympians in the end. So I, I really like the thought of that. Uh, what else can I share with you? Do you have any other questions? Um, I, should, I wish I had a glass of water with me right now. I think that it's really important to know what our goals are. And if you're, if you're joining me late, we're talking about habits and we're talking mostly about linking or habit stacking, uh, however you think of it. I like to think about routine, reward, and then repeat. And I'm just gonna reiterate that. So think of something you do routinely every day. Really, it's as simple as brushing your teeth, right? So that's something you always do. So what can you link to that? Maybe you can link um, using, you know, flossing or using a serum that you want to add to your skincare routine. So you know you're going to brush your teeth, and after you brush your teeth, you want to add your serum. It's a very simple link. The two go together, the toothbrush, the serum, right next to each other, so that you just can start re repeating and reiterating that habit, whatever it is that you want to stick with you. The other thing that I really got from this book was about identity, about choosing to tell yourself that you are that person. Um, so, and, and speaking about it in the first term, that I am an artist and an artist would draw every day. Therefore, I will draw every day, right? So identifying in the present tense, not the future tense, I will be an artist, I am. I am a successful organizer. I am a good friend. A good friend sends birthday cards. Therefore, I will send birthday cards or whatever, however you define that. Uh, so yeah, I really, I think that the whole idea of habits uh, is a really important one. I'm also going to talk about the intentional margins. I, my good friend, Katie, who's on this call, has this concept of intentional margins. And intentional margins are giving yourself boundaries so that you can take care of what you need to do. And I think we're gonna to have to have her on a call just so that we can a little get, get a little bit more information about that. But it's about saying no to what doesn't fit and saying yes and, and having the margin so that you can say yes. Um, and I think that that really helps us able to take on these habits. So I, I, I've been going on a little bit, but I'm really excited about this idea. And I love this book, Atomic Habits. So I highly recommend it. And the overarching idea is that very small changes, two minute changes can really make a difference incrementally. Oh, and I think that um, it was Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld, who had this don't break the chain. So every day, whatever it was that he was trying to accomplish, he would make a check mark on the calendar, make a check mark on the, he didn't want to break the chain. And just that, that whole um, reward for him, the reward was making the check mark, and he didn't want to break that chain. So whatever small, small, choose something small that you want to make a change for a positive habit and try just for this next week and let me know in the chat if that was helpful. Anyway, I've, I've been going on for 15 minutes now. I want to be respectful of your time. I thank you so much. If you're new to the community, please join in, comment. I'm really excited about how engaged everybody in the community is. And I think we've been sharing some 
great ideas. We had so much talk about garlic press. It was fascinating to me because if you know me, I don't do a whole lot of cooking and I just use the garlic out of the you know, jar, but I might change my mind. So I'm gonna leave that with you guys. It's been delightful to have you all here. Let me know if you have any questions or any comments in the chat and I will see you guys all soon. Okay, take care, bye-bye.